Hey everybody, DM Jim here and welcome to another episode of Game Terrain Engineering. In this episode, I'm going to create another car for Gaslands. I'm going to be doing this quite often, probably once a month, maybe even twice a month. The reason being is uh, at Gen Con this year, Gen Con 2018 in Indianapolis, I am going to be running the Gaslands tournament for Osprey Games. They've asked me if I would... Um, would head that up and I do love Gasland so I told him I'd be happy to. It's going to be I believe two tournaments and then the winners of those will go to a championship. Maybe the top two. I'm not sure. We have, we're still ironing out the details. One of the things I want to make sure is that anyone who signs up they may not they don't necessarily have to bring uh, cars or, or whatever to play. So I want to make sure I have enough to bring so that if someone needs a car or two or three I can loan them some of mine. And uh, so I'm going to be making a lot of Gaslands cars, and because of that, I figured I'd just show you how I'm doing it. As with previous videos, I'll put a link right here to uh, one of the last ones I did called the Cheap Shot. They're not fancy. Uh, they don't use anything extraordinarily, you know, expensive. Uh, the last car used a couple little 3D printed parts for guns. This particular one I'm going to do it has no 3D printed parts at all. It's just a bunch of collection of pieces that I found from model kits and stuff, some wires, some electrical components, that kind of thing. So this car, uh, no 3D printer uh, at all, but it does have some electronics components which I'll put in the description below if you're interested. So let's go take a look at how I'm gonna create uh, this new Gaslands car. This car is called the Aristorat, and I don't actually have to take it apart. I'm not gonna drill out the rivets underneath. I'm just gonna glue on the weapons and details that I'm gonna do and then prime it. The reason I'm not taking it apart is a lot of the details on this, like the engine, the air scoop, um, the, the front uh, ram here, those things don't have to be separated from the car to do anything. After I prime it, I'm gonna give these things a unique color. So what I'm gonna show you right now, I've got these two little plastic pieces here. I don't know where these came from. I have no idea, can't recall. But I have two of them, and they just look cool mounted inside, and then with the tube hanging out the window, something like that. Um, it'll look interesting. I've got a uh, small plastic electronics component here. Again, don't know what it is. It's just a small piece. It's going to be glued into the bed here. And then I have one of these wire connectors, which I've used before. Now the ones I've used before had two wires. This one is a three wire connector. It's much bigger. I'm gonna use it as a flamethrower and I'm gonna mount it on the back here as a turret. Once I've got these pieces glued on, I'm gonna add some wire and some other little bits. One of the things you can do to a car to really sort of make it look, you know, post-apocalyptic is you can just glue bits and pieces on wires and other odds and ends that don't make sense and they don't have to. But I've found that once you do that and you paint them, give them metallic colors or things like that, you end up with a car that sort of, you know, fits with the theme of Gaslands. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these up and then prime it and get to painting. Okay, continuing with my modification to this car, the two guns have been glued on, the super glue is dry, the turret in the back is done, and as I mentioned earlier, one of the things you can do to just give this car sort of a futuristic, you know, what look with weapons and stuff is just to continue to glue bits and pieces on it. Now, again, some of this stuff, this is nothing right here, but a little, um, transistor and I've built I've uh, normally the wires uh, you know go this way I bent them up so that you could see them more e easily let me show you here uh, these are just electronics components that can be tacked on to a to a small car you know you don't have to have an explanation for what it is it's just something so you know with with things like this, it's just experimenting, um, looking at what what would look right. Symmetry is never a good thing, in my opinion, when you're talking about cars that have been modified with weapons. And what I mean is, you never want to mount everything, you know, right down the center line like that. You know, mount it off to a side or put put something on only one side of the car. 
I don't know why. I can't explain it. it the randomness of it just, just lends itself to this post-apocalyptic car. So with this piece right here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it over here on this, this uh, wing here on the back. And then once it's secure, I'll use some pliers and I'll bend these wires. And these wires are very stiff. So wherever I bend them, they're going to stay. I won't have to super glue them down. But what I was thinking is I might bend one, this one right here, prior. I'll just bend it at an angle here. And I'll mount it as if it's going into the flamethrower like this. I'll, I'll push it up so it's touching the flamethrower. And then after the super glue dries, I can um, bend these other two wires you know, maybe I'll run this one into the air scoop, and maybe I'll run this one underneath, you know, underneath the wing. Who knows? I mean, it doesn't have to make sense. Now, the other piece I found, which I think is really interesting, I don't know where I got this piece, but it's a small pipe, and it looks like a gauge. I don't know if you can see this or not. There's like a gauge. It's sort of like, I guess, maybe a pressure regulator or something. And this would look perfect somewhere. And where I thought it might go would be on the back or on the side of the bed here. I'm not sure exactly. So I think what I'm going to do with this piece is I'm going to glue it. This is the tough question when you're modifying a car, where to put all these bits and pieces. So I think, yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll put it right here, like it's going under the wing, like it's hiding something. I am going to go ahead and glue the wheels. I'll do the front ones right now. Just to put a little super glue in there and in there. Spin the wheels a couple times and then pinch them tight. And they will, uh, after about 20 seconds or so, they're, they're going to be locked. You do not have to glue the wheels. Um, a lot of people put their cars on bases. And the Gasland Games game book, uh, rule book, does come with some recommended base sizes so that you... Uh, everybody's playing with consistent sizes based on whether you, you're um, going to be using a car or a truck or a rig or whatever. So um, some of these, some of my cars are a little longer than normal, and um, I've just I've just kind of figured out that I don't like the idea of bases. All right, those wheels are getting really good and secure, and uh, once that's dry and the other pieces dry, I'll glue the back wheels. But I'm going to go ahead and let this sit for a little while. The car is finished, uh, all the painting is finished, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this blue tone on the blue, obviously, and I'm going to use this strong tone, which is a dark black ink wash. It's the quick shade. Uh, I'm going to do it on all of the metal. All right, I will use just a flat 
brush here for the blue. I'll do the blue first. And that is what I'm going to call the blue streak, right there. Uh, I'm really pleased with this one. The color looks good. The blue is sort of, it's dirty and dingy and faded in some spots, but the blue wash really helped it out. I'll take some close-ups and post them at the end of the video so you can take a look, but I think I'm gonna turn this into a flamethrower, a rear-mounted turreted flamethrower. Machine guns on the front, you know, the uh, scoop on the front here, or the ram, and, uh, there you go. About the only advice I can offer that I'm starting to figure out with these, you know, making these small vehicles into Gaslands vehicles is pay attention to the little tiny details. Things like door hinges that, you know, where the door swings, rivets. I, I, you can't really see it maybe, but there's some small rivets I painted right here. Anywhere you have small details that you can that are easily visible by your by the naked eye try to paint them different colors different now you know with the engine the only thing i could really do there was was go between gray silver and another silver and they were three they were distinct enough that that the engine in there um definitely it's not all the same color okay and then the wash that i put over it helped really pull those uh, individual colors out but i really like this one this one was fun to do. Uh, again, no 3D printing here. Uh, all of these were like little plastic model bits or electronics components or the diamond plating sheet that I had bought. Very simple to turn a, a car that already looks good into you know a combat vehicle. I didn't like the green, the green metallic of the original model. It looked too new. And unless you strip that green off, um, it's very hard to... Um, the, the metallic paint that they use on some of the Hot Wheels cards is very hard to age or make, make look weathered. That's why I primed over it and just started over. But you don't have to do that. You could have saved time just by staying with the original color of the car and just adding weapons and uh, other little um, you know accessories and, and painting those. So if you have any questions, post them below and uh, I'll probably be back in about three or four weeks with another car. I've got a lot to make. Uh, for the uh, Gaslands uh, tournament I at Gen Con in, in uh, early August. Uh, but it, even if you're not able to register for it, come out and watch it if you're gonna be at Gen Con. You're gonna get to see a lot of little cars. Uh, hopefully people will be bringing their own, but I know I'll be bringing all the ones that I've done. So this is DM Jim, and uh, I'll see you in the next episode.